everybody. Welcome to the Entrepreneurial Truth Podcast today. And with me today is Kira Wasserback, and she is the owner and co-founder of On the Edge Events and the Virtual Event Experts. And she helps others reach their full potential to deliver their message and create lasting connections through the power of in-person and virtual events. With over eight years in the events industry, she has mastered the art of thinking outside the cookie cutter formula of events and focusing on creating intentional, exceptional experiences. And welcome to the show, Kira. Hi, Jim. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's gonna be good. I I uh I don't get many people who are in the in the realm of online events because that's big now with uh COVID-19, all the stuff we kind of have to do, virtual stuff. I know you also have real events that you do and, and things like that. Tell me how you how you got into that or, or what made you want to do that. Yeah, I've always I've always loved coordinating events and planning events and parties. When I was growing up, I used to, you know, when you played make believe, that's what I did. I planned these fake events and stuff. And then as I got older and started working, I worked a lot with small businesses. So I've always worked with entrepreneurs. And my favorite part was always coordinating these events for the companies and bringing people in and trying to think outside the box that way. And so when I decided, you know, it's time for me to start my own business and go out on my own, I kind of made a list of the things that I love to do and events was on there. And to be honest, I started out with a wedding planning business thinking, okay, this is the thing. And then could not stand it. But at the same time, was like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was not for me. Um, but at the same time, I was exposed to this world of conferences and virtual events and and uh, live events and retreats and those kind of experiences. And I just absolutely fell in love with it. So sounds absolutely amazing. And yeah. uh, have how did this is a question. How did COVID affect you? COVID-19 affect your uh, ability to earn income? Or uh, did you notice a drop off or an increase? Or how did it affect your business? Oh, yeah, I think all event planners just kind of experience the same thing. It's a complete drop off. I mean, there really is no live events right now. So if you aren't moving into the virtual space, you really aren't coordinating any events, you're pushing everything out to the next year. And so it's definitely, it's been decimating for a lot of businesses in our industry. So I'm sorry to hear that. I really am. It's been a up and down kind of roller coaster for uh, entrepreneurs, especially online, but uh, online entrepreneurs, actually, some of them are doing better because everybody is now getting used to the online, the Zoom and the, you know, StreamYard, like I'm using different platforms and getting used to how to do that. They never had to do it before. And so now the online space is becoming bigger because there's more people in that in that pool, I guess, than there was before. Um in in your when you were coming up and you had this idea and you said wedding planner and you said uh, you know not not for me and then tried to get to this how what were the things that you feel like you had to overcome either internally or externally that uh, came up against you like a roadblock or something like that in your journey to where you are today? I think the biggest thing has been just going ahead and pushing forward. If I could go back and do it all over again, I would jump in both feet first, but I've always had, I've been very lucky to have these amazing opportunities presented to me and work for the most amazing people. And that is wonderful in one aspect, but also can get you stuck because you end up with an employee kind of mindset and pattern even though you might love your job, you know that you're meant to start your own business. And so it's very conflicting. and It's very hard to get over that hurdle, especially when people say, wow, what a great opportunity you've been offered. It's Mm. it's super tough to get over that hurdle and to just jump in with both feet and no safety net. That's difficult. (laughs) Even in mindset, that's difficult because you you have that certain fear of okay that's not a steady paycheck you know <laughs> I hope I uh, I hope I don't hope I didn't make the wrong choice usually we're talking about weddings and stuff like that and saying eh, not for me pivoting's fine you know and that has yeah. to happen in 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 uh, in your journey because sometimes you just don't know you don't know what you don't know until you get into it and, and uh, if you Okay, if you had it to do over again, would you even entertain the wedding industry? Did that help you to get to where you are today? Or would you just skip that altogether? (laughs) 
You know, I don't regret a single move that I've ever made because it always pushed me forward. Everything that I've ever done has always led me to the next step and put me in the spot where I'm supposed to be. So with the weddings, I didn't even know that this conference world, I knew that there were conferences, but I guess I thought of them more as these educational seminars and kind of boring and very structured. And I didn't know that there was actually a job where you could create these amazing experiences for people where they come and they have all this energy. And I would never have been exposed to that because if I hadn't started my wedding business, I wouldn't have gotten what happened was a friend who owned a lavender business was part of this national association and sent me forwarded me an RFP that they were looking for an event coordinator for their annual conference. And so I wouldn't have even known that that world existed if I hadn't started my wedding business. So I think there's definitely no regrets. It's, it's all good stuff. It all leads you to the right place. (laughs) So you said um, about the cookie cutter, you know, type of events that happen. I've been to a few of those. And, and uh, how do you, how is, how is what you, how is what you do? If I could talk, <laughs> it's what I do. I better do it well. Um, no, but how, how does that, uh, how are you different than, than that? What's the differences? What, what makes you special? Yeah, so um, I grew up in a very creative family, very artistic. My dad is an artist, and I've always really loved how art can bring out people's personalities, and I love hearing people's stories. I'm a big reader, and that that's my favorite part of any part of life is hearing people's stories. So I really try to bring people out of the mold. Yes, there's a formula that works for certain types of events, But I want to make sure always that the personality of the host and the personality of the audience and what the audience needs is all taken care of. And then honestly, the other part of it is just human connection. Uh, Me and my partner on the Edge Events, like that is a big thing for us is the way that people connect. That's where the magic happens. So we just try to create as many opportunities as possible for that kind of in-person and virtual connection just to create that experience. It's super important. What are the differences between the actual <clears throat> in-person events and the, and the virtual events? Is there big differences, do you think? Yeah, there are. And I think that it, it's amazing that this COVID-19 actually happened because it, it kind of threw us quickly into this virtual world where we just absorbed as much as possible and learned really a lot of information about it. And the thing with between live and virtual events is there are a lot of differences, you know, you'll never recreate that live person to person connection, but you also can get a lot of intimacy in the virtual world that isn't possible at a large live event. So there are benefits to both. Uh, Both are really needed and should be in existence for a very long time, but it's amazing what you can do now with virtual events to create those kind of engaging experiences that in some ways are not as not the same as live events but in other ways are actually superior and more effective than live events so they both have really their benefits and yeah they do and and i mean i do mostly i do all virtual right right now but so i i know uh, and and there's so much new technology coming out there's so many new things coming out and uh, that assist you with that type of a thing. And and if it wasn't for what we're going through right now, the pandemic, I don't think a lot of that stuff would have been improved or come out better, you know, with new stuff and better technologies and things like that. I, I really think that this has been a benefit to those who have an online business rather than a detriment in most cases. Yeah, Do you see no, the same thing or? I definitely agree. I mean, especially in the industry where people are doing events, they're just performing really highly right now. Everything's become easier to use. So the average person that you would not have reached before, you can now reach because they are familiar with Zoom. They're familiar with these different virtual tools. They're used to attending online experiences. The big thing is just creating new experiences each time. And luckily there are people who are frontiers and forerunners in that space who are actually doing different things and they keep evolving and keep growing. And 
you're right, we would not have had that kind of vast momentum. I mean, we were headed there slowly. We were trickling into the virtual world. Live stream tickets were becoming a must for events. But now I'm thinking that when when live events do return, it won't just be a live stream. It'll be an actual interactive virtual experience that you can buy from home. So you you'll have both the best of both worlds. And that would have never happened if it weren't for this experience. So. I agree with that. I also think that, that it makes your event uh, accessible to more people. So yeah. say you got something in Utah and not everybody can get there in, in our Nevada or something like this. And, and, you know, you got people like me in Michigan or, you know, oh, they're just like, damn, that's kind of hard to get there. But yet you can buy a ticket and be there virtually and then experience almost the same thing. You're not going to get the same energy. You're not going to get, get to meet the people and all this other stuff. So there is a little bit of a drawback, but you will be included into it. Whereas before, Hey, if I, if I can't go, I just can't go. I might catch a replay sometime where down the road, but to actually be involved in it is totally different than catching a replay or something like that. Yeah. yeah. I know, I know, I know, I know a lot of places now that are doing virtual, all kinds of different things, sports. I'm really big into sports and, you know, even the fake wrestling they have now digital screens in their audience where the people can buy a ticket from home and watch and be like in the event where it's just like a TV where it's got their, you know, them on it live. It's pretty cool actually, but everybody has to be innovative now because even sports stadiums can't be filled. So what do you do there? You know, and everybody's using different techniques and different ways of getting people involved. And so I think that that's going to only increase in the future now. Yeah, absolutely. I really, I really believe that as well. And the things that we're able to do now with virtual experience, like putting people into little groups to do workshops and creating Q and A's and having, uh, we have more virtual DJs emerging. We have virtual, you know, boxes that boxes that are sent to you before the event where you can open them up. You can have swag, you can do a virtual wine tasting, have an instructor do something like that. There are so many interactive experiences that you can create that I really don't know that, well, probably when we first start up, people will do the basic live stream still. But I think the real future of live events even is to have that virtual aspect and have people be able to connect. And you'll have your speakers doing a post-session Q&A with people in the virtual space. And I think it's going to be a really amazing development that you see in in live events as well because of this so yeah it's just a it's just more getting more people involved having more people active with your you know mm-hmm. with what you're doing and i like that the only thing i don't like about the virtual environment you don't have that one-on-one handshake type thing which I, well you may not anymore i don't i don't know how they're <laughs> going to deal with that but you know what i'm saying that that uh that in-person interaction is, is something that i think that uh moving forward is going to be very difficult to do. And so what do you think about that? Do you think that's a drawback or do you think um, it's a minimal drawback? It's both, you know, when we're able to, again, people that want to experience the live experience are always going to come to the live event. They want to travel. They want to see people. They want to, they don't want to just see them at the event. They want to go to dinner with them. They want to form groups and personal connections but we've been able to actually create experiences like that virtually, not where you are. I mean, you're never gonna, like you said, replace that live person to person connection. I'm shaking your hand, I'm standing there with you. I'm spending the weekend live with you hanging out. But in these breakout rooms that we do, like uh, after each session, a lot of times we'll throw people into a small group. We'll have a question that they answer. They start sharing. And you're talking about at a live event, hundreds of people where you get to know a few people. Now in these breakout sessions, you actually get to know six people each time you're in a breakout and you're talking about personal stories, things related to the session. So you're getting to know people on a pretty personal level. And I will tell you, I've made some really good connections and collaborative partnerships through virtual events. And that's only in the short time since the COVID experience hit. So uh, the virtual event experts at group is all based on people I met in virtual events and met in the virtual space and have never been in person. So it, it is possible to create those connections, but there there is nothing like human to human connection. That's true. Yeah. Do you, 
Okay, so what do you think is the major hang-up of people who are trying to plan an event and say they're going to go it on their own and they do, oh, I don't need no help, I'm good. What are the things that they that they don't see? What are the things that, that come up as their problems? Uh, one of the biggest things is strategy. You really need to have your goals pinned down. You really need to know what your every single step is going to be, and you need to plan it out well in advance. A lot of people throw an event and they treat it as an incidental. They think it's going to be a great event. You could have a huge following, but if your following has never attended an event with you, you might not have a very good attendance. You have to actually nurture and create an event experience, whether it's live or virtual. You have to have a strategy. You have to treat it like an actual working part of your business, just as important as any of your other programs that you have in your business. Um, and to do that, you really do need someone to help you strategize and also to handle the little logistics that are going to come up because this is a, it, especially if it's your first event, you are adding a whole new big animal to your business and you really want to make sure that it runs smoothly and that all the details are taken care of. So. Because perception's reality. And yeah. if you, if, even if you have a huge audience or whatever, and you're perceived to be kind of a knucklehead when it comes to <laughs> you know, this type of thing, not to, not to be funny, but that happens. People are like, oh my God, why is this so bad? You know, you know what I, this guy is so good. Why is this so terrible? And it's because I think because uh, well, we just think, ah, we'll throw something together, show up and just be on the spotlight. And I'm good with that. I'm good. I can do that. You know, I, I think that's the thought. And us as entrepreneurs, we like to wear a lot of different hats. And and if we can get it done, you know, we think we can do it better than everyone else. What do you say to that type of person that's like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm good. You know, I think I could just throw this together. And I know what that means to the perception of the actual people that are following them. Yeah, I think if you throw it together, then people are going to see a thrown together event. And they are going to feel as if they've committed time to you so you could just throw something together and to deliver it to them halfway and you might deliver a ton of value and that is the number one important thing in any event is to deliver value and that's great but if you're not appreciating them and nurturing them and making it easy for them to access the event making it very clear where they need to go if you're not following up with them if you're not making them feel that they're connecting not only with you but with the other members of the audience then you're not creating an experience and your audience deserves an experience if they're signing up for an experiencing that you're offering. So I, I think that the perception is just that either it's boring or it, it, they just don't care that much. And especially yeah. if you're making an offer at the end of your event, you really want to be careful how you're perceived because you don't want people to think that they just signed up for a pitch fest. That and if I've signed up for this live event and it's crappy, then my expectation of the product is it's going to be crappy. Yeah, that's to be honest. One. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you you know what I mean. I mean, honestly, just just me being me, you know, if I see something, it's like, oh, that's kind of interesting. This guy's pretty cool, and then you you know you do some Facebook group or something, and you have my attention, right? But you throw together a terrible event, and it's just the pitch fest, like you said. And it, you know it's kind of thrown together because you can kind of sense that type of thing. Mm -hmm. You're not apt to buy the product because they don't really put the time in there. Why would you think they're going to put the time in into the product? Yeah, absolutely. I agree. I mean, you're, I'm showing up as an attendee. If I'm an attendee, I'm showing up for you. So you need to show up for me just as strong, if not stronger. And with these virtual events, people are committing a good amount of their time. And you have to understand that if you're doing a two or three day virtual event, nobody wants to sit there and just watch you talk for two or three days. I don't care how fascinating you are. <laughs> so you're not going to. And if I if I experience that and I attend an event like that, then that's and then you tell me, OK, I've got this course that I'm offering or this mastermind that I'm offering. I'm going to think that the entire mastermind is going to be you talking to me and not interacting with me because that's what I experienced at your event. So it's definitely a reflection. It is. It is. And that's why I, I totally believe you need some help and someone who's been in the industry for a long period of time, um, especially if you're new. Oh my gosh, if you're new and you've just built something, you, you could have the possibility of killing everything you've built just by having a bad event. Yeah. People will forgive. I'm not saying they won't, but it, it's just not a good look on you as a person. 
you know, they if will. he's trying to be an expert. Yeah. Your, your following is going to forgive you no matter what. And your following is the people who want to attend your events. I mean, you reach some outside people, you might lose them. Your following is going to say, oh, well, that's too bad. But you really don't want that. <laughs> that's not how you want your event to go. <laughs> no, you, you know, and everyone make mis- makes mistakes and things like that. But this is, this is a situation where, you know, if, you, if you're going to put that much in, you, I know a lot of people, they put a lot into their product and they, they preach, everybody preaches over delivering and all this other stuff, but they really need to, to be able to preach that in the event leading up to that. Because if it's not, if it's not put in with the same um, meticulous type of a mindset, then, you know, th- then you're incongruent. You've got one thing, your, your, your product is great, but your you know, pre thing to your product, your webinar, your virtual event, your virtual summit, whatever it is, if that sucks, then, you know, the perception is, okay, then the product sucks. You got to be really good in both areas. And to do that, I think you do need help. So I, I like what you do. Um, uh, how many people do you, do you serve in, a, in, you know, in about a year's time, something like that? I mean, how many, how many clients can you take at one time? I guess is what I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, so it depends on the type of client. A lot of people in the coaching space have multiple events a year. Uh, we usually take on no more than 12 clients uh, because uh, we really mm-hmm. want to focus on the main events. So if we're saying one large event a month and we're, that's really like stretching our abilities to handle that. We outsource, you know, some help for the onsite stuff, but we want to make sure we're giving the right attention. And then let's say they're also doing retreats that, that, really fills up our calendar so Mm -hmm. uh but you know that's why we offer the virtual help as well because there are some people that aren't really ready to sign on with a full-time event coordinator or an event coordinator that's going to be in charge of everything maybe they're still in the headspace of okay well i would like to teach my virtual assistant how to do this or i'm not sure that this event is going to be high performing so i want to give it a trial run first then we just provide the education and we help them along the way, but we're not really like right deep down into the event planning stuff. So there's kind of two facets to your business. One's education and one's more hands-on. Um, is that fair to say? Yes, definitely. Okay. So um, on the education side, do you have like a, uh, I don't know, like a, a course that you do or how, how do you deliver that educationally? Yeah, so the virtual event experts is our educational sector, and uh, it's myself and two other event experts in the virtual space, and they, we really just teach about virtual events. We have a membership. We have some swipe files and documents that we sell individually, and we also have a consultation package uh, with the live events, and even in the virtual space um, through On the Edge events. It's a little more high touch, high service, Mm -hmm. uh, the higher end type of things where we're more hands on, but we are, we do offer just consulting packages to guide people along the way, but it's, it's definitely more hands on and we're, we're right there with the event. So. Yeah, I think it's better. I think it's more helpful. It depends on what it is, but I think it's more helpful to have someone there hands on because then you can, you know, oh, I got a problem, <laughs> an emergency, you know, and you guys yeah. are probably used to that. So it's like, you know, on one hand, say I haven't done many of these before and, you know, you've done uh, so many years doing this. It's a little bit different. <laughs> yeah, definitely. It's just like, it's just like you're reaching out to an expert and on anything you know, Facebook ads, any, any type of thing that you're really not that familiar with. And maybe you don't want to do all the work and figuring out every single thing on your own and just partner with somebody, you know, like you. And then, you know, it makes it a lot easier for them, I think, too. So it's a good, yeah. it's a good service and a good way to, to help people to bring their product or service to other people and to uh, deliver value over the course of their, their event. So any advice that you would give someone who's, who's thinking about doing an event, uh, leading up to something, maybe another course or something, you know, or just doing the event and making the event the whole thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, what advice would you give to the people that are just, I've never done it before, but they, they just, they want to do this and they want to throw something together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I really would advise them to seek some kind of help, you know, whether they're coming in and, 
just asking a simple question or seeking an expert on a consultation for just to sit down with them and talk to them for a while. I, I really would suggest that they do that because it will just help guide them in the right direction and just be really clear on your goals. What do you expect this event to do for you? Is it something that you really need to have that live? Do you want a retreat? Do you want people to really connect? Do you want to sell a product? Are you looking for that human to human thing? Should you wait until we're able to do that again? Or could you create this experience virtually? So once you have your goals in mind, everything else kind of stems from there. That makes perfect sense. What kind of pitfalls do you do you see uh, people having at, at live events? When we can have them again? What are the? I mean, I know technology is always fun, and <laughs> microphones always work, and everything just is perfect. <laughs> but I mean, outside of the tech issues and the things, uh, what what uh, what are, what do the people have to kind of prepare for in their own self to be able to do this? Yeah. Well, that is you know, not to reiterate too much about having some help, but really your job as an event host, if this is your event, you're there to deliver and you're there to be on stage and you're there to interact with people. You need a lot of energy to do that. So if you mm -hmm. haven't done it before, or if you have done it and you've felt kind of divided or you're stressed out or you find yourself getting frustrated at the end of the day, that's a sign that you're doing too much for your own event because all you should be doing is delivering and being present. That, that is your only job. And you need, some, you need to make sure that your audience feels very taken care of, very pampered. A lot of people see these as a vacation. They wanna get away. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they're here to learn, they're here to meet people, and they're here to have fun. So you need to make sure that those things happen and nobody's going to be able to do that if your registration area is unorganized or people don't feel welcome, or they don't know where they're going. There are so many aspects Big to one. creating a customer experience that you just really have to think of. And beyond all the basics, you want to go above and beyond because that's what people remember. Yeah, that was key. I, I thought what you just said about the energy that you have to bring and the the attention being divided among, oh my gosh, is 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 this layout correct for this venue? Is is you know, where does the registration table go? You know, mm -hmm. I mean, and does it make sense with you know the with the flow of the of the people that are coming through and how convenient is that for those people? And how many things do you have them trying to do at one time? Because is that going to hold up the line? There are so many things that you have to consider. And if you don't have you your mind is everywhere else, you're not going to be delivering and giving your best 100 percent to the people that you're trying to 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 give to. <laughs> You know, mm -hmm. so I, I that was that was one of the biggest things I see that, that you brought up so far about outside of the planning aspect and being strategic and and that type of thing. But the energy that you have to pull off to be on stage and to engage that audience and to be totally present, totally there for them instead of, you know, <laughs> it's like getting distracted. Somebody's whispering to you off the, off the side or something yeah. like that. You really do need someone to take care of that problem. <laughs> Yeah, you really don't want to be going up for a big session where you might be delivering one of your keynote speeches that you normally do, or you might be uh, making your offer next and then having someone come up to you and say, you know, oh, this this menu item won't be available for lunch and you don't want people saying, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's just not your job and it's, it shouldn't be your job. You don't want the hotel staff coming up to you. And you certainly don't want your your energy to be off because you're right. thinking about all these different things. So you want the problem solved before you ever get approached. Absolutely. You don't want to be bothered with anything else but what you have to do. That's so key. And 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 I think that it's probably one of the biggest things. Strategy wise, how long do you recommend people plan out an event before they do it? Minimum six months. I like yeah. at least six months. I love a year. Um, you know, at the, the longer, the better, because you can do some really amazing things and the planning process does take time and energy and effort. And so there are details to put into place and these things follow a timeline. And the more time you have, the more you can add to the experience. So well, I've heard people do it as a month, you know, I think that's kind of crazy. I don't think that's enough lead time. Have you ever done one of those, like a real quick one? And 
How does that go? Yeah, <laughs> we've done it and it, it's doable and it goes pretty smoothly, but there are always things behind the scenes that you just know could have gone better and that you know you could have added and enhanced the experience if you had more time. So it's not that it's not possible, but it, it's definitely not the best deliverable experience that you can do. And if it comes out great, just think of how good it could have been if you had six months. <laughs> Yeah, six months, people. Come on now. Yeah. No. <laughs> Give her a chance. Be okay. It'll be better. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I really appreciate you doing the interview with me today. I think I've learned a little bit more about uh, actual virtual events because I don't do those those as much. Because so I've I've learned a little bit more about that. I think the audience has learned a lot more about events and how they actually should be planned rather than you know and and what the pitfalls are and things like that. Can you give me uh, your information? How do people find you to if they want to plan an event with you? Yeah, uh, you can find me at on the edge event singular. So on the edge event ends with a t dot com. Okay, on the edge events dot com is where you can find her. And you, you want to give out social? If, yeah, it's up to you. Yeah, you, know, you yeah. Don't have to. So it's uh, my Instagram is at Kira dot Wasserback, and you can always find me on Facebook, Kira Wasserback. Just shoot me a message. I'm super happy to connect with people and give any advice that I can. This sounds great. I appreciate you being here. Everybody, if you could just uh, click the like button, if you like this video, also click the subscribe button and the notification bell so you know when new videos are coming your way. And if you've done all that, you're probably exhausted. So take five. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but we really appreciate you being here, Kira, with us today. And everybody out there, for Kira and me, have a great day.